Hey there, people of the way. We're in Numbers 11. And first, if you will, let's share the blessing of Aaron from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I ask that in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 11. Last time we did the silver trumpets, we expanded on the order of the march, the practicality where they're splitting up of the Gershonites and their duties. Now we're into people complaining again. <laughs> kind of makes me chuckle because I can be a bit of a moaner sometimes. Um, to the Lord. Um, can't we all? Let's be honest. Um, maybe you can't. Maybe you never do. Anyway, I'm reading from the ESV. I'm Nick. And I always say, or try to say, when I did my Bible studies and when I was learning scripture and so forth and when I do, I read along because you get the wonderful kind of thing where you, something will come in your head or you, it's almost like the kind of spirit of the Lord, shall we say, will stop you during the study and make you look into it yourself or you'll go off and look into different parts of the study. When you're just listening to commentaries or um, people, you know, summarising it, you miss a lot of the things that jump out of you from the page jesus said it's his words that, that clean you out and they're not my what i try and do is share bible knowledge and give you sort of seeds to look for if you know what i mean to to, to sow your own garden if you know what i mean <laughs> i'm trying to give it but what i'm trying to say is it you'll get more out of it if you read along i don't say stick with the i, I read the esv it's not perfect i've said before I've, i studied lots of different versions of the bible none of them perfect but the Lord will use them and they're perfect enough for the Lord to teach you out of. Do you know what I mean? So, so anyway, let's get into Bible study. We're in the people complaining. Surprise, surprise. And this is chapter 11 of Numbers. And let's just start. And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their hardship. And when they heard it, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Now... I forgot my notes for a second. I made lots of notes on there. Numbers 11. So the fire of the Lord kindled. What did they do? So verse 2. Then the people cried out to Moses. And Moses prayed to the Lord. And the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Tabera. Because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Tabera meaning burning. Now in the Septuagint. It says. And the people murmured. Murmured sinfully before the Lord. And let's just check it commentators know the severity of the punishments have increased and they do increase now the law has been given and for example exodus 14 11 uh, 14 uh, uh, exodus 15 24 through 25 and also um, examples like us are touching the ark now the philistines would have touched it took the ark uh, when they you know captured it from saul but they didn't get killed like us did just for touching the ark but us knew the law and the law was it should have been carried on the shoulders went into this in different bible studies the israelites by having the law the same i'm going to give you some the more you know the more it's expected and the closer you go to the light kind of thing to go you'll be held to more to account so be careful don't be overly righteous jesus said that but it's still worth it but you got to be you know i'm trying to sort of encourage you we've also given you a little bit of uh fear of the lord is beginning of wisdom so they start the, the fire here is harsh because they're complaining but nobody knows exactly what they're complaining about the tagman of philistines says there were wicked men of the people who being discontent devised and imagined evil before the lord psalm 78 17 verse 22 kind of gives you a bit more let's go to psalm 7 and um, and th but that's really about the craving so i think this is maybe a different part let's do psalm 78 in a minute um so yeah i don't know what they were i'll try to give you as much as i can 1 corinthians 10 10 shall we go there 1 corinthians 10 10 it's not a great big bible study this one um but hopefully there's plenty here for us to kind of chew over um and think on that's what it's all about thinking on the word of the lord it's good good for us while we're thinking on the Lord, we're not doing anything wrong. That's what I like to think anyway. At least that's the hope. 1 Corinthians 10 10 said, We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble in verse 10, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. 
Now these things happen to them as an example, but they're written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overcome you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. I don't like that phrase that people come up in the modern world and say, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. That's complete bull dust. God, God, if, you, if it's anything, God doesn't give you anything more than he can handle. And as God is God, then he can handle everything. But that's just common sense. So that's pretty crappy saying as well. But God don't give you more than you can handle. That's just nonsense. You can go in any hospital around the world and see whatever suffering, which is unimaginably unfair, it seems, on people that just don't deserve it it seems that is more than they can handle because you cannot see justice in this world very well sometimes i'm not being harsh there it's easy when you live in your big mansions and stuff and you've got your kind of health and you're going out all the time and you're enjoying the freedoms of youth you might have vitality you might be in love live long enough and if the lord gives you that then you're going to also have times where you just feel you're at the end of your rope and that's the Lord giving you more than you can handle because the Lord is a refuge and a high tower and if he didn't give you more than you can handle the chances of you going to him when you go into stuff that you can't handle is negligible so the phrase should be the Lord will give you more than you can handle so you go to him because he can handle everything anyway I've got that out of Corinthians and I don't know why I'm wittering on verse 4 back to numbers 11 now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving and the people of israel also wept again and said oh that we had meat to eat we remember the fish weight in egypt that cost nothing the cucumbers the melons the leeks the onions and the garlic but now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manner to look at now they're trying to turn around and say we we could eat all the best food when we're they're just talking complete crap by the way what they're trying to say is we got treated like kings when we were in Egypt. We got all the food. No, they may have had access to cucumbers, melons and so forth. But they were crying to the Lord all the time, if you remember. And waxing so big that the cry come up to the ears of the Lord about the slavery. They were getting killed. Their firstborns were getting killed. Now they're trying to make out that they had it all good. Um, based on their tummies. Um, gotta laugh, really. And for this we are going to see Psalm 78 verses 17 through 22. Um, and don't we like to see things our own way when it suits us, eh? you got to kind of chuckle. It's written for our example and I'm just talking to myself on this example. I do like to kind of see the freedoms I had in youth maybe painted through a better picture than they actually were. Uh, because when I see the outcome of what happened to me really, I ended up on the streets and everything then it wasn't actually so good but I do miss the freedom of being able to walk around where I wanted to and I was able to drive where I wanted to and kind of you know I miss that but you know the outcome of it sleeping around and kind of you know probably wasn't so good obviously I wouldn't want to be doing that now especially seeing as how I share the bible nearly every day I probably wouldn't end up very good either so Psalm 78 17 through 22 Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. I love that name for God, Most High. Just puts him in his place. Better sometimes to us than God. Because we just kind of got everything because we're so bad at kind of giving the Lord the reverence he, he deserves. The Most High kind of really punches it home. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God saying, can God spread a table in the wilderness? He struck the rocks and the water gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he also give bread or meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard he was full of wrath, a fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger arose against Israel because they did not believe in God and did not trust his saving power and so forth. And we'll go into what he does and we'll read a bit more in a minute. So I'm going to keep my finger there because there's going to be more about the quail. So going to take out the manna now now manna was like coriander seed and its appearance like that of bedellium bedellium the people went about and gathered it and ground it in hand mills or beat it in mortars and boiled it in pots and made cakes of it and the taste of it was like pastines baked with olive oil now they've actually got this kind of stuff that grows in palestine that they think this manna was that's used in medicine and it grows in a certain time of the year um, but it's not like this where you can make pots and cakes out of it and stuff so 
I think they were just trying to kind of dismiss the miracle of the manor, shall we say, and, and people that, you know, are, if you can dismiss some of it, you can dismiss all of it, which is why people like to do it. So a little bit of advice. I looked into it. It doesn't help your faith, so I won't waste your time. It's just manner. But if you want to do due diligence, you can look into it. There was something that kind of is similar in that it grows kind of of itself and you can kind of make it paste and stuff out of it but it's used in medicine it's not something you can eat like this all the time it definitely didn't taste like olive oil or whatever um but what they do is kind of like the, the enemy does kind of it just gives you a fake one so that you distrust god god's saying it's special it's manna from god because then they said it stopped the manna stopped but anyway let's continue when the jew fell upon the camp in the night the manna fell with it Verse 10, when Moses heard the people, now I'm going to change this a bit, it says when Moses heard family after family weeping throughout their clans, each one at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. People complain, Lord gets angry, Moses is stuck in the middle, and he's not very pleased by it. It's because, now this is going to be Moses himself asking for Jesus Christ get anything out of this study take this this is Moses saying he just cannot do what the Lord wants him to do he hasn't got enough love for them he just hasn't to put up with their crap shall we say so Moses was a wonderful man probably the best and he was the best because he was appointed for it that could possibly have gave the Mosaic law but he's not Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is set apart on his own God being God caring about the people under him and he wouldn't have complained about the fact that he had to kind of save you from your sins for example like Moses is going to complain about putting up with the people because he'd be complaining to himself anyway so let's just Moses heard family after family weeping throughout their clans each one at the door of his tent and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly and Moses was displeased verse 11 Moses said to the Lord why have you dealt ill with your servant and why have I not found favour in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me why are you picking on me why have you laid this burden of these people on me Moses is feeling sorry for himself did I conceive all these people did I give them birth that you should say to me carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you swore to give their fathers where am I to get me to give all these people for they weep before me and they say give us meat that we may eat I'm not able to carry all these people alone the burden's too heavy for me if you will treat me like this kill me at once if I find favour in your sight that I may not see my wretchedness Moses is basically saying I give up if this is all my lot for the rest of my life just do me me now at this point Moses is already in his 80s um, you know he left the Exodus um, it's Stephen said when he was 80 so this would be 82 it's getting on he's got a long way to go I'm afraid <laughs> the Lord told him you've got another 38 years of this to go he probably would have tore his hair out however thankfully Jesus Christ is not the kind of person who will say you're going to treat me like they just killed me now because I ain't putting up with them Jesus did say how long have I got to put up with you because they're unbelief and stuff and he's talking to unbelievers but Moses is he's asking for a bit of an out he's fed up they're complaining they probably want to stone him you know what they're like in them days and yeah and he's complaining stuck in the middle he does, he's a man and he's even the most humble man in the world is losing the end of his rope he's getting no thanks complaints he's stuck between a righteous God and a disobedient people and uh, yeah I'm sure every apostle and great man of God has been in the same position including people like Elijah who just went and stuck in the desert he said I'm the last one I'll give up and God says no you've got 7,000 more don't you know that's why we all need Jesus verse 16 then the Lord said to Moses gather for me 70 men of the elders of Israel whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them to the tent of meeting and let them take their stand there with you now in this verse shall we say the Sanhedrin which you know you already know about Sanhedrin the Sadducees and the Pharisees they had a high council when Jesus went in there you know to Caiaphas and they had the Sanhedrin and that was their high council they take their authority from this verse they did take their authority from this verse it's from the elders and the 70 men they take their authority from this portion here 
they did their right I mean they, Jesus didn't complain about the Sanhedrin and having their authority so yeah and in fact the Sadducees were the biggest portion of the Sanhedrin during the time of Jesus um, and of course these 70 men they weren't Levites they were elders of Israel so I mean then you would have probably been some maybe some Levites maybe I don't know probably not elders of Israel um, Moses and Aaron they already had their job so anyway 70 of them um, so the Sanhedrin in Jesus's day like I say that was mostly full of Sadducees also had some Pharisees and they were yeah they take their verse from here verse 17 so say 70 of them and bring them to the tent of meeting and let them take their stand there with you and I'll come down and talk with you there and I'll take some of the spirit that's on you and put it on them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you so that you may not bear it yourself alone I like this part God is not going to argue with Moses about it because he doesn't argue with about what he's got to do but Moses appeals from the right heart that he's just it's struggling I'm sure he didn't just lose his temper but he is kind of really he's had enough when you're asking the Lord to strike down you've had enough the Lord's hearing it and he's going to share the burden he's calling it a burden because it is a burden with others who are in position to help Moses he's not just giving it to any old person giving it to elders now these 70 people I reckon they're the same 70 as went up with Moses to Mount Sinai in Exodus 24 verse 1 and I did a full Bible study on Exodus 20 shall we have a quick look shall I not be lazy Exodus 24 verse 1 let's just have a quick butchers then the Lord said to Moses come up to the Lord you and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship from afar Moses alone shall come near to the Lord but the others shall not come near and the people shall not come up with him and so forth so that's the covenant confirmed and there were 70 witnesses if you know what they are and they may well be in the same 70 doesn't tell you who the 70 were let's just go along with that and probably the same why would you choose different 70 maybe there were more responsible people i don't know but it's the same sort of time so yeah but i think it's probably the same 70. verse 17 and i'll come down and talk to you there take some of the spirit read that so you're not very burn alone verse 18 and say to the people consecrate yourselves for tomorrow and you shall eat meat for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying who will give us meat to eat for it's better for us in Egypt <laughs> not going to work out well they think they've got away with moaning to God and God's going to give in because he's a bit of a sucker and then if they honestly if he would have let them get away with it they would have just kept on doing it testing the Lord over and over and over again but, and saying it was better for us in Egypt now they were having you know going to be in the wilderness but they were getting supplied for and so forth and to be honest with you only two of them are going to make it out of the wilderness Joshua and Caleb even Moses don't get out of the wilderness and um, so yeah anyway it's a tough lesson this therefore the Lord will give you me and you shall eat you shall not eat for just one day or two days or five days or ten days or twenty days but for a whole month until it comes out your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you because you've rejected the Lord who is among you and I wept before him saying why did we come out of Egypt they wanted to they wanted to go back in slavery over food first and this is the fear of the Lord I'm going to be sharing it in a minute um, but Moses said the people among whom I am number 600,000 on foot and they said I'll give them meat that they may eat for a whole month shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them and be enough for them or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them and be enough for them and the Lord said to Moses is the Lord's hand shortened now you shall see whether my word will come true or not now Moses is disbelieving here because this is probably why he was moaning in the first place he didn't, he didn't think he was able to be fulfilled they were all complaining for me and there just wasn't enough there wasn't enough flocks and herds and it, I mean you're talking millions of people 603,550 just men of war Moses was saying well where are we going to get all the meat from even if we had loads of flocks and herds there still won't be meat for a month what are you going to do take all the fish out of the sea He's been a bit petulant Moses to be honest with you but the Lord answers him back and says was my hand shortened do you think I'm not capable and the answer is yes he does think he's not capable anyway now you should see whether my word will come true or not 
So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them round the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders and as soon as the spirit rested on them they prophesied but they did not continue doing it. Prophesied, spirit caused prophecy. This denotes the uh, divine ecstatic utterances. Uh, similar to Pentecost in Acts 2 verse 4 and 11. Let's go there quickly. Um, you already know the story of Acts New Testament. Everyone knows New Testament, about the Old Testament. If you're doing numbers, you probably already know Acts as well. You probably already know numbers as well. Just having a refresher, eh? Um, that's what I'm doing anyway. So, let's have a look. I'm doing more than that. Hopefully, I'm helping people. So, what's the point? Of putting it online. Anyway, Acts 2, 4 and 11. And they're all coming of the Holy Ghost. Start at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all gathered in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared on them. And rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so forth. And then, where are we? Yeah. In verse 11 said, both Jews and proselytes... Cretans and Arabians, they heard them in their own tongue. That's why they had tongues. They didn't have tongues to rabble and then no one prophesy like Paul says later on. They had tongues for a specific purpose. In here, in the story of Numbers here, they um, they would have been like Saul. You know, when Saul prophesied, they it's divine worship. When the Spirit of the Lord comes on you, have you ever done that? You watch something, you don't know why, you just feel the Lord, you just makes you sort of almost want to cry. Might be like that sometimes, I suppose. You know, it's difficult sometimes to see the Lord, but when you can, sometimes you just feel kind of all emotional in it. Hopefully you get like that. That's maybe a very small portion of what they were having, kind of religious, uh, not religious, um, they just felt the Lord. They really felt the Lord. And if you feel the Lord genuinely like that, you can't have but praise, no doubt. But they didn't continue doing it. Verse 26, back in Numbers 11. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Aldad and the other named Medad. And Eldad means favour to God. And Medad means um, affectionate or with love. I think that, that's what it means. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And they, so they prophesied in the camp. So they were among the people, but they weren't, they weren't part of the 70, it seems like. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So yeah, um, our dad did i tell you what that means yeah favor to god and affectionate yeah verse 28 and joshua the son of nun the assistant of moses from his youth said my lord moses stop them but moses said to him are you jealous for my sake i'd have it that all the lord's people were prophets that the lord would put his spirit on them prophecy about jesus christ here got to answer that so yeah i would have it that they would uh, that everybody would prophesy so they would have the spirit on them this is moses's prayer and it was answered in the new covenant if you look into the jewish sources now um i don't know if they've got have they got that i had a, a very nice kind of lad i'll big him up a bit um he's a nazarite i think his name is uh, hebrew Naz nazarite on his youtube channel he sent me a nice kind of comment about my uh Nazarite vow lesson. I, I don't know. Did, did the Hebrews today have the Spirit of the Lord um, on everybody? Don't know. Anyway, Moses says, "Are you jealous for my sake? Would that the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put a Spirit on them." Under the new covenant, Jesus Christ he promised that everybody would have the Spirit of the Lord. That's His, and they do, because the Spirit of the Lord isn't all just about flailing and speaking to it's about the lord guiding you in your walk making a light a lamp to your feet god's power and providence getting you where you need to get for you and for other people around you glorifying the lord through the work of the lord and the spirit within you cleaning you up cleaning you out making you how you need to be it's all the work of the holy spirit and that's why moses is saying i'd have it that all the prophets of the lord and um, that they're all prophets and lord put spirit on all of them because if he did there'd be no complaining or anything and Moses and the elders in verse 30 of Israel returned to the camp. Verse 31. Then a wind from the Lord sprang up 
and it brought quail from the sea and let them fall beside the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side round the camp at about two cubits above the ground a cubit being about 18 inches and there needed to be that many because there were so many people millions of people see so anyway verse 32 now for the quail shall I shall I go into this do you really want to know about this no let's continue verse 32 and the people rose all that day and all night and all the next day and gathered the quail those who gathered least gathered 10 homers 10 homers um, about 220 litres is it I'm trying to remember a homer's 220 litres so it'd be 2200 litres so and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp while the meat was yet between their teeth before it was consumed before they'd even had a chance to swallow it the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people and the Lord struck down the people with a very great plague frightening first the Lord is showing them that you can feed them at any time at anything where they want and there's a purpose and a manner special purpose they're getting the bread of angels it's written in the New Testament they're complaining that God is not capable of doing it testing him first off the Lord's showing a lot of things here he's giving Moses a lesson as much as anyone else because Moses kind of doubted him as well the Lord is God of the whole world the whole universe and they were saying you couldn't even give us any meat to eat <laughs> so he didn't just kill them but showing them that he can and there's a reason why he didn't which was that they were relying on the providence of God through the manor every day they didn't have to go around worrying about what was going to fill their tummies but they were because they were lusting after the flesh a lesson for us there as well um, and because they were so engrossed in what was going on with themselves physically they were missing the glory and stuff that was really going on hang on a minute there's a god of the universe that's leading us by cloud and by fire everywhere we go that's protecting us and teaching us and supplying our needs every day and they're missing that and they're going i'm hungry and i fancy some i fancy some bacon or whatever because I haven't had them for months. Remember when we could get bacon when we were in Egypt? The blind. The blind lead and the blind. When the blind lead the blind, both of them fall into the pit. Most of them were blind and they all fell in the pit because they didn't get come out of the wilderness because they missing the obvious. And this is what we do in Fred in the Bible times. Go after all the spiritual gifts that don't lead to love and then they big that up and they miss the basics which is the loving your neighbour. And loving your neighbour as yourself comes after loving Lord your God because the Lord your God will teach you how to love a neighbour as yourself otherwise we're just doing it by our own kind of way and we don't love our neighbours ourselves very well just by giving someone a fiver when we see them struggling on the street don't mean we're loving our neighbour well might be nice enough compared to what other people do but it's not compared to what God wants you to do which is genuinely care about that person as if he was you there's a totally different standard and that's why loving Lord your God knowing the lord will lead you to loving your neighbor better and then you've got the spirit of the lord guiding you on how to do it and no one is going to be spiritual perfection in this life but the more saints like moses said that's got the spirit of the lord the world will be a better place it may still be hard and it is for me and everybody that i know who's had troubles um but we have that hope we have the hope and that sometimes that kernel of hope and that can sometimes feel like you're hanging on by the skin of your fingertips it'll make you stand even when the storms come because the Lord's able to make you stand anyway so let's continue and by the way don't crush these people here just because they got an example made out of them they're an example but they were still God's people do you know what I mean they're, just, they're moaning about food we probably moan every day about 101 different other things so and they were in the wilderness remember and they'd been treated like slaves they were still God's people and doesn't mean they weren't saved just anyway you know verse 32 remember I, I like to remember this our freedoms and liberties are built on the death of lots of people first world war how many millions died 21 or whatever was the average age weren't it about 2021 20, if you've gone up to that lad who's 2021 20, on the song and say well just think of it this way your liberty will give freedom to your great grandchildren that guy would turn around and say sod my great grandchild I want my liberty now Hezekiah even said that about when you know Isaiah went up to say well your kingdom's going to be wretched away from but it won't happen to you and he turned around and says oh that's good then as long as it don't happen to me you know I'm all right Jack kind of thing 
that's kind of because God's looking after the long term plan. If we didn't have it the Lord's way, we'd have it our way, and nothing bad would happen to us. And, and sod the future generations, they can look after themselves. Thankfully, the Lord looks after future generations, but unfortunately, because of the way we are and the way the world, I'm afraid change often comes through such difficulty. But we got to hope that it's for good. That's the hope. That's the Christian hope. I, I hope. I, you know. Anyway, let's let's continue. So, verse thirty-three. While the meat was yet between their teeth, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord struck down the people with a very great plague. Therefore, of the name of that place was called Kibroth Hatava, which means the graves of craving, because there they buried the people who had the craving. From Kibroth Hatava, the people journeyed to Hazaroth, and they remained at Hazaroth. And the plague. Let me just give you the verse of the plague. The Hebrew Makha pestilence or epidemic sickness um, let's go to, again to Psalm 78 27 through 31 I wonder how many people stay for actual to watch the rest of this video uh, if that was me watching it I'd think he's done now and probably turned it off um, but if the Lord might send you to Psalm 78 anyway give you a better lesson than any kind of words I would ever share um, and hopefully he has uh, what am I? Nothing. Servant like everyone else. Psalm 78, 27 through 31. So 27. Here we go. He rained meat on them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall in the midst of their camp, all round their dwellings. And they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. But before they'd satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them and he killed the strongest of them and laid low the young men of Israel. And then he goes on and it gets worse. In spite of all this, they still sinned despite his wonders and did not believe. That's what the Lord is trying to get them to believe. Believe it or not, this was a mercy for the rest of them that are still alive. He's trying to get them to believe. Get them. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Anyway, that's chapter 11 of Numbers. Um, sorry for waffling. Next time we've got even Miriam, I'm afraid. And Aaron have a go at Moses' position because he marries a Cushite woman. <laughs> this wasn't a good moment for Miriam or Arab, to be honest. Um, but before you judge too harshly, it's the only time in the Bible that Miriam is actually kind of, and I blame her because she's the one that gets the trouble from the Lord. Or Aaron. But Miriam especially, it's the only time that she, shall we say, picks on her brother. And um, she just got caught in a, a little bit of pride. Happens to everybody. So... Don't mean it's right though. Anyway, till next time, may Lord bless you and your family. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.